All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our nine millionth episode of uh, Drawing Hive uh, tonight. I, you know, I think this is our third Christmas, third or fourth Christmas holiday, which is absolutely amazing. I think it's our third. Our third, I think. It's at least our third. It's at least uh, fourth. One, I, I, I've lost one, track. Two. No, it's our fourth. It's our fourth. Yeah, it's our yeah. fourth. So, um, just to let you know, I'm in the room. Uh, this is John English. If you're here to draw, you're in the right place. Um, uh, I guess I could change my camera. I probably should for this part. And uh, say hi to everybody. Um, we are drawing uh, characters that I thought, you know, from well-known movies, Christmas movies. And I, thought, I, I just chose some characters that I thought would be fun to do. Look for good lighting, good look for good expressions, all that. And uh, so tonight's kind of our holiday night. I actually have a holiday slide here. Um, you notice, uh, you, you notice we're, down, we're, we're down a man or a person. Uh, uh, Timmy is not here. He's traveling back from New York. And um, he's on an airplane right now. Uh, he might be able to jump in at the end. But right now, I think uh, it's just going to be the three of us. Maybe somebody else will join. But I'm in the room with Bill Cobe and Cassandra Loomis Kim, and uh, two great drawers and painters uh, that I love to draw with. And if you're here to draw, you're in the right place. So no music tonight. Timmy's not here. I asked Bill or Cassandra if they wanted to sing the song. They said no, and I'm definitely not. So uh, we're just going to jump into it. Our first pose tonight is uh, Macaulay Culkin. Uh, is Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. And I mean, what a cherub of a face right there. I mean, just absolutely fantastic shot. Um, yeah, there was, uh, you know, there's all, you know, there's the iconic shots of him, you know, with his mouth open and his hands. And uh, this is way better. <laughs> this is, this is just a really, really yeah. nice shot. It is beautiful. Yeah. So um, the next shot, is of um, Donna Reed and James Stewart uh, from uh, It's a Wonderful Life, Mary and George Bailey. Um, I love this movie. It's my it's my favorite it's my favorite Christmas movie. Um, yes, it just is. I mean, it's iconic. And I thought, okay, I got to do it. I got to I got to have something. And that's a fantastic shot. Most of you don't know who Donna Reed or James Stewart are, probably. Um, but I hope you find. No, you gotta know. You gotta know. Jimmy Stewart. Okay. Jimmy Stewart, one of the most iconic actors ever. Uh, Donna Reed, uh, exceptional actress. She even had a variety show when I was a child, the Donna Reed Show. Mm -hmm. um, follow that. You got Mr. Griswold, Chevy Chase, and. Uh, Again, there was all kinds of shots of him, you know, posing. And I thought, oh, this is good. And I realized you look through all the, the still photos of him and all the all the gags in the movie. He posed for everything. <laughs> everything was, you know, everything was a setup and a pose. Uh, so, uh, the, again, this is uh, the first two poses are 20 minutes. And this you can do that. You can, I don't care how you do them. You can do them out of order, obviously. I'm doing the first one and I'll probably just paint on it the whole night. Um, but you can choose whatever you want to want to. And the last shot is of Ralphie, Ralphie Parker um, from the Christmas story. And um, this, this is my, I love this shot. And I was really bummed out because I couldn't find it with it that that was uh high enough uh resolution to show it and i found it like at the last minute and i thought oh this is great so there we are um we're ready to start drawing uh cassandra give them the the, the, the information yep i'm gonna um what we went easy unless you've got five minutes to come up with a better hashtag if it's not busy but uh, we're kind of going with maybe hashtag Mary Hive. That always that sounded like a fun one. I see Gary put in deck the hive. We'll check to see if it's busy or not. And then I'll put a link to the reference in the chat. Let's 
sí. Well, Good. So I'm going to stop sharing and we are ready to go. Cassandra's got her uh, arsenal of brushes there. What are they, Cassandra? What kind of brushes? Oh, are I love the um, Princeton Velvet Touch. It's my favorite. I just, I think they're great. And they give me oh. really good detail brushes. So Sandra, I can't stop out. buying them. Check that out. Oh, I got the wrong. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> well, I changed. I'm never, I'm, the, I'm never in the right place. Right there. Yeah, man. Aren't they what, awesome? What do you like about those brushes? Because I've been looking for new brushes. Um, I really like their rounds. Like they have a really good tip for the rounds. And then they have a good variety of like liners that go really, really thin or medium. I don't know. It's just, I I, I, love, I love them all. I, like I have the Felbert. I have their flat. I've been trying lots of brands. There's a lot of great brushes, but... I just feel like I've settled into Velvet Touch and they're my faves. Oh. I just like to be able to say it, the Velvet Touch. It it does sound oh, fancy. It sounds like a razor brand, you know? It, it really it. does. <laughs> well. Yeah, I, I need to get some new brushes. I, uh, I used to really like... Um, I don't remember the brand, but um, they were synthetic, um, you know, white synthetic brushes, um, and they held their point, and they were just kind of amazing to paint with. Um, I don't even know if they make them. That's the thing about art supplies is, you know, you find that they don't make things that they used to make. Hey, John, can you do me a favor and put sure. the link to the photos in the chat? I can't, um, it won't let me send it. What, what did we go What did we go with, Mary Hive? Oh, no, that is, uh, we've got a whole bunch. Oh, link, link to the photo, I don't know. What, what, okay, what, I've never done that before. Um, yeah, I, I the, it's- Art Passage slash Drawing Hive. Isn't there a link in there? Put it in the chat. Yeah, I have the page open. I just can't get it to. Yeah, to put it in the chat so anybody can get it if they want it. Okay, give me a second. Oh, there goes my drawing, Cassandra. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's all Timmy's fault. <laughs> See, I have this totally set up and Timmy trained where I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I know it's just well, a sticker when I have to fill in, right? I don't I don't have to chase anything. Well, I got this uh like extremely strong, uh, long link. And everybody's telling me it's much shorter, so. But hmm. no, I mean, I have it in on mine and it has like, it's Discord. Oh gosh, Timmy would be so mad if he even heard us having to talk about this. Oh no, I, I think it's great. Thank you, Laura. Laura posted it. Oh, thank you, Laura. Well, it's been posted in the um, yeah in the Discord. Yeah, yep. we need it in the, uh, I'll, in I'll, the chat. I'll put, I'll put it in the chat. Hold on, I got it. Thanks. I'm capable. Maybe. All so, right, guys. I'm looking up a bunch of the hashtag suggestions. I think we're just gonna go with hashtag Mary Hive. That has three images, the least of all of them. So. Easy. 
Hashtag Mary Hive. Sounds like somebody. It does. You know, Mary. Mary Hive. Mary Hive. She's very friendly. <laughs> Some would say cheerful, even. Festive. I like Xander posted the top um the top ten rewatched Christmas movies. So uh you hit you hit most of them. I know that. I did the same thing before I started choosing. Mm -hmm. um, at, that's um, Wait, do you feel like you're missing Die Hard in this list here? Die Hard's not gonna happen. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. Well, Bruce Willis even says it's not a Christmas movie. Oh, it's so it it hits all the tropes. It hits all the tropes. Well, Bruce Willis, look it up. Don video. I'm sorry that he got it wrong, but it is totally a Christmas movie. Yeah, well, I don't you know, I don't like people shooting each other in Christmas movies. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, kind of if you think about the that. other things. Like a couple separated that comes together on Christmas. There's a holiday party. Yeah, I know, but there's also a terrorist act going on. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to fight for it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> it's a Christmas movie if Bill Murray's character from Scrooged was actually making Christmas movies. Do you That's remember true. Scrooge? Do you remember Scrooge? Oh yeah. oh, yeah, I love Scrooge. Remember the beginning of Scrooge where it's like Lee Majors comes to the North Pole to rescue Santa Claus, you know, armed to the T. And it's funny. I saw right after I picked everything, I, I then saw a Bill Murray spot and I was like, yeah, I could have used that. Could have done that. It's tough. There's so many good ones. Yeah. I got popular once, I guess. I'm a, I've always been a big Chevy Chase fan because I, you know, it was the right timing for me uh, with Saturday, you know, his one year on Saturday Night Live. Uh, but um, I don't like him. I, mean, I don't like him as a person very much. <laughs> But uh, but I sure appreciated what he did on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I heard he was a, a complicated guy to work with. Yeah. I like his movies a lot. I, I like, they're silly. Oh, they're, yeah. That's fun. Fletch and Caddyshack. And... They're silly. Not so much the vacation movies, though. I did this, um, like, tacky light run with a friend last year, and it's, like, you run through this huge neighborhood, and it's all, like, crazy lights, and they make it a whole, like, party. It was, it was really fun. Um, and there was this one house that went all out, National Lampoons, and one was even dressed up like um, Randy Quaid, and he had like an RV and everything. I, I mean, <laughs> they nailed it. I was dying, and he looked like he was having so much fun. He had you know, a cigar and everything. I, I, I couldn't find a good high enough resolution and good lighting with Randy Quaid, because I would have, I would have used that. I um I I looked I remember looking for one years back when I was looking for reference for a holiday episode too and I wanted one so bad because he just looks so fantastic in that movie. Well, Timmy would get mad that I asked Bill this question, but I'm going to since Timmy's not here. Timmy, <laughs> uh, uh, this is for you, Bill. Yeah. Do you remember Randy Quaid in Paper Moon? Yeah. Oh, yeah, God. that was awesome. 
That's such an awesome movie. And, and you know, um, Nice and Men. He's been yeah. a lot of movies. I mean, and yeah, I know, forgot my blood dry. I'll be right back. Ryan O'Neill just passed away, I think, right? Not last week, a couple yeah. of weeks. Um, he was, I think, such a, a gifted actor. I mean, Ryan um, O'Neill and his daughter was amazing. Yeah. She, had, she had her Academy Award when she was, what, 12? <laughs> yeah, if that, you know. And and that was a time of, like, there were a lot of, like, movies with, you know, kind of tough young girls in them, like the Jodie Foster characters and... Maxine, yeah. You know, from, do you remember, um, do you remember Tatum O'Neill in Bad News Bears? Oh, yeah. So we can go, we can go down this road because Timmy's not here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to suggest that we don't. <laughs> but, I'll but, uh, give you two more minutes. It, no. Okay. The original Bad News Bears is a fun movie. Oh, yeah. That my father actually took me to. Yeah, Walter Matthau, man. Yeah. Yeah, that, that guy was amazing. First Monday of October. Man. Yes. He was so good. I mean, he... God, couple. Yeah. Um, he was a good character actor too. He could just play. Oh, he's great. Strange, strange characters. So I'm approach. It's looking good. I'm approaching this drawing. Well, I'm wearing my glasses, which are kind of distorting things, but um, I'm approaching this drawing just trying to draw the light and the shadows, and not worrying about the likeness. Um. It looks good. It, that's a good weight technique from my point of view. Thanks. And so I'm just trying to make it adja adjacent to um, Macaulay Culkin. Um, you nailed the likenesses last week, Cassandra. Oh, thanks. Because yeah. um, I only did one. Well. That's all I did. <laughs> I only did one that was any good. But it was great. I honestly don't remember what the other ones look like at the moment, so I'm, I can't battle you on that opinion, but I imagine it's way better than that. I painted over one of them, or drew over one of them. And, uh, Let's see. I am totally skipping over and doing Ralphie because I love the soap in the mouth picture. Great shot, isn't it? Such a great shot. Yeah. Isn't that a life boy that he's sucking on? Soap, soap poisonous. He talks about, he waxes poetic about the, the really good tasting soap. Just <laughs> love it when he was walking around like a blind po person from soap poisoning. Oh, yeah. My mom turned me on to that movie. That was one of her favorite Christmas movies. Aww. Yeah, my whole family loves it, and I don't love it. And I always feel bad that I don't love it. I can quote it because they would always put it on every year. But I, I just never got into it. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I, uh, it took me a while to kind of warm up to it, but it get what it gets watched a lot. Yeah, it took me a little while too. I think. One of my favorite Christmas movies, even though it's. Um, very strange and flawed movie is uh, Love Actually. Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah. Never seen it. Yeah, it's it's good. I mean, it's a lot of inter interrelated uh, romances and friendships and things. Um, Cassandra, but Cassandra, you know, I think the, the healthiest relationship in that entire movie is the mm -hmm. relationship between Bill Nye and his manager. Oh, I totally agree. You know that that's the that's the 
And the relationship I wanted to see was Liam Neeson and um, Emma Thompson. Oh, oh, yeah. But I loved the story with Liam Neeson and his son. Yes. Yeah. But but they kind of skipped over his grief, you know, the kid's grief. You yeah, know? I don't know. I think, yeah, that's the tough one to kind of but, maybe capture. Kids grieve differently. Yeah, but um, I I was told that um, the Rowan Atkinson character mm -hmm. was originally supposed to be an angel. Oh, interesting. And, um, and his, but Rowan Atkinson is oh, I love him. I think he's a comedic genius. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's he's but so his role was to stop, um, stop. Um, what's his name from having an affair? That's why the power oh. that that was sort of originally how it was written, I think. Oh, interesting. Oh, it does explain you see him at the airport. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the airport scene. He's great. Um, and I like the um, Martin Freeman romance. Pre Watson years. What's that? Yeah. Pre Watson years. Yeah. Hey, let's take a moment. Why don't um, everyone talk about what materials you're working with? Um, Bill, how about we start with you? All right, I'm using a um, brownish colored um, new pastel on this wonderful toned paper I got from Utrecht. So, it's kind of the consistency of Academy paper. You'll have to explain that. Academy paper is this special paper that um, Mohawk paper makes, I think, that the Illustration Academy would get every year, and they would have a different color. You'd have a stack of it, you know, and the students could, it was like, you know, a stack, I don't know, here, like, I don't know how many sheets of it, but the students I, could I, I, I would buy a thousand sheets and have them cut in half because they were they were 36 by 17 and a half yeah. no that's not right uh they were 36 by 24 and so they ended up being 16 uh 18 by 24 18 by 24 yeah 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 and uh so you'd have 2000 sheets of that stuff and yep and we'd use it all yeah, and that was a company that, um, that's a company that doesn't make drawing paper necessarily. They make paper for large printing and. Yeah, I'd buy it, I'd buy it from the Trayvon printing paper supplier. And um, and I just ran out of it um, oh. the last time. So I, I got to order some more. I remember Mohawk was distinctive to me as a company because they had some of the best campaigns. You would see them in communication arts and different places where they would hire illustrators to do multiple pieces or really beautiful, sometimes single pieces to show a certain um, type of paper. I'll show you something in just a minute, Bill. Uh, uh, I'll find it real quick. I think that's Oh. Bill, what pastel is that again? I'm sorry, I missed it. I was it's new pastel. It's just a I don't know what color it is. It's a brownish see, color. That's the color. What oh, nice. Is? Okay, looks kind of oh. like a rust. Yeah, it is kind of like it's like a rust color. That's a good. Talk about paper companies spending money. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. There you go. I can't see what I got to go back to Zoom here. Hold on. Yeah, that's a Mohawk ad, I'm sure. Yeah, so wow. it's got, and they hired my dad to do all these paintings. Wow. Yeah, I say I remember wow. the I remember the Native American one, and yeah, though yeah. Oh, it's that, beautiful. Oh, look at that. Now, is each of those printed on a different kind of paper? Uh, it's all a Mohawk paper. 
Yeah. Like I didn't I didn't even notice for them here. Can you show that last one, that black and white one again? Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. That's it. That's beautiful. I, the black and white one, that's a horse. That was one of his early horses. Oh, yeah. Oh, one. yeah, I do remember that one. Yeah. And he did this three different times. Four different times. Sorry, I have a paintbrush in my mouth. Uh, four, <laughs> four different times um, of th they're between four and five feet across. And at different stages in his career, he did a white horse on a black background. And it's wild to see the difference. It's, I mean, it's just, it's insane. Oh, God. Well, the one that is, the, the big one with the big flattened out body. Nice landscape. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, but I mean, they, look at the, the effort they went in. You that's know? gorgeous. Oh. Wow. They only have like two of these things. I wish I had a bunch of them. Bad time uh, to be shown to be talking. I'm supposed to putting this acrylic down. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, John, tell me what you're working with since you okay. started. To I'm working on. Uh, I'm working on masonite. Pro properly prepared, and I used to work on masonite unproperly prepared uh, until <laughs> Sandra yelled back, and um, or she educated me. Let's let's put it that way. How how is it prepared? Uh, it is sealed on all sides, back, front, edges, with, uh, in this case, it's sealed with uh, exterior, latex exterior house paint. Perfect. And, uh, you know, Cassandra. I, I know the reason for that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And, um, I mean, it, you can. You could put it in water, and I don't think it would get what I mean. I don't think it would affect the the masonite at this point. It's got two coats all the way around. Just people forget to sell um, seal edges with masonite, and there's a big problem with them peeling. And it's one of those things. Once they start to peel, it's really hard to repair. But if you just seal the edges, front back edges at, at the beginning your piece is good to go and you're passing off a beautiful work of art that it's going to stay around for a long time. Masonite's wonderful work work with, but you definitely have to seal it. And you should always get the tempered masonite, the one that's on tempered on both sides. The hard surface. Yeah, this one's not. It's just one side. It but if you seal it, you're okay, Bill. Because I, I don't always get the ember. That's that is ideal, but it's not always easy to get. All, all, almost all the, I'm doing, been doing some large landscapes right now, and they're on, they're on tempered on both sides, and uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's ideal, but, you know, for little sketches like this and stuff, this is probably going to end up in trash anyway. So, what? Yeah, I, I, I'm starting to collect now. Yeah, I was collecting a bunch of unfinished bad drawings. Now I'm collecting a bunch of unfinished bad paintings. Um, and again, I, I, uh, I, I'm just blocking this thing in this way. Uh, you can do this on lots of different surfaces. I'm using acrylic, just straight up acrylic to kind of get things put in the right place, my drawing and and then I'm going to go back and cover it, cover it all with oil. I'm just doing an underpainting in acrylic. I do I do that for like really big. This is a larger landscape, and you can see that the ooh, all of my that's that's all acrylic. To that point, and beautiful. I just started painting oil back into the top and this area, but I start them all with acrylics. Just, you can just get there faster. Yeah, I was just going to ask, can you explain why you start with acrylic and move on to oil? 
I just have a lot more control. I can, I can I'm much more expedient. Um, you know, this, I can do this, and I did for years, do the same thing I'm doing right now on oil, but it wasn't under a really fast timeline. Yeah, I just really like how much control you get with acrylic because you can dry the layers so fast. Right. And then, but I love the pigment I get from oil. I don't always feel, so I love to finish in oil, but um, Me yeah, too. I, I always I love like to. Can, you know, the oil, it, oil is just, it's got, you got more control, you know, you got, you can use it so many different ways, thick, thin. Um, you can juice it up with, you know, mediums. I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Mm -hmm. and ideally, um, I mean, it's just so much fun to finish in. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like the finish in oil is, it's the thing that makes my whole painting pop. Yeah. I know a lot of artists that are able to do the whole piece in acrylic and it looks super lush and works. I just... I don't know. I haven't had the same effect that way, and I just love the combination. Yeah, uh, the, Cassandra, do you know the artist Greg Spalanka? Oh, oh, yeah. He was he was at Illustration Academy when I attended. Right. Okay. So Greg, a lot of his pieces, he was the first person that I met who would start with acrylics and then finish off with oils. Uh, I mean, I know there were other people doing that, but he was the first person that I met, and I saw how what it did with his work you know mm -hmm. it just he could get these wonderful glowing areas of life that really looked like light um and it's luminous and so um, um so can you guys talk about why Bill, you are saying tempered versus untempered. Um, and I like to seal with GAC 100. John, you like to seal with exterior house paints, um, which also works fantastic. Uh, Bill, could you talk about why you yeah, say? Um, so I, before I, you know, older paintings that I've done on, on non-tempered, the, the board on the back tends to work more and it tends to fall apart and the, the stuff that's tempered tends to um, keep its shape better. Uh, and sealing it on all sides um, definitely makes a difference because the untempered stuff is more likely to come apart. Um, the edges are more likely to, to fall apart. So, um, and you can you get a heart and and with the untempered stuff, you, you know the side the edges kind of can fray and the sides can fray. It's kind of a weave, like a can almost feels like a like a can, very rough canvas on the back. And so well, you know, you know, masonite. I mean, what it's used for in construction is like for eaves and houses. You know, they'll put it. They'll you know staple it up under eaves and houses. Yeah. And it's, you know, then of course it's always painted. Um, but it's it's a construction material. Yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a compressed product, a compressed board, and it will it will just yeah. deteriorate if if not just yeah, sturdiness. It. Yeah. Well, you also want to seal it because what they use to compress it can affect your paint. So right. you want to seal that with two layers so that none of that can seep into your painting because it can over time discolor. I do want to say real quick, we're going to move on to the second pose. Um, so if you're on track for In Order, then it's a wonderful life with um, George Bailey. Do that one next. Or you can do whatever you want. It's all about just arting it up. All right, I'm starting the timer again. I'm using Timmy's timer today. So, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but there's a thing that happens to me when I see an artist's work. When I saw those paintings by your dad, it reminded me to think about edges and design, uh, which I think are, uh, seem to me at least, two very important aspects of, of those that particular set of works. 
Oh yeah, um, I'm. You guys ever find big that big like, edge, big edge edge on edges. And it starts to um, starts to really affect how you see your own work and how you paint your own work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that that's influenced, but sometimes it can be very specific. Well, that's kind of what my dad was all about. Yeah, well, I feel like when you see somebody kind of ahead of you in the art game working and you see them logically doing something, it you understand the importance of it and they can give you an answer for why it matters. And I think that's the big thing is, you know, John, it was from you and your dad that I learned about doing acrylic then oil. And you guys had a great answer for why you did. And then I started trying it and I was like, Oh, this makes sense. And now I don't, I don't really want to work any other way. Cause that made that continues to make the most sense for me after watching you both and, and Brent too work that way it really influenced the way then I worked. Well, sorry to do that to you. No, thank you. Sometimes nothing makes any sense to me. Well, not everything is supposed to make sense. Uh. Well, there's people that paint, you know, there's people that paint really incredibly well, um, realistically, you know, um, and there's people that paint really well, you know, abstractly with shapes, and, but to kind of combine the two things, the two thought processes, you know, with abstraction with realism, that's kind of the sweet spot that the work that I respond to the most and also to see you know sort of echoes of artists that I like like Bonard or Matisse or somebody or Deeming Corner whoever you see it reflected in somebody's work but it's also they've made it their own thing you know and, uh, right. Well, I think that's what's exciting. That's what this maturity in art is. Finding influences and inspiration and learning to implement that in a way that escalates your work in, in its own unique direction, right? Yeah. I was teaching a kid today about um, drawing. He was asking me about perspective. And kid, I mean, like teenager, um, and um, you know, and I was talking about perspective, and, and what I tried to, what I think he got out of that is that proportion and shape relationships within a picture are more important in establishing a sense of space than. Um, linear perspective um, because you're always dealing with you're always dealing with a given space and um but you can you can make great pictures without any perspective I mean, right exactly and and you can, um, you can do all kinds of things yeah and and so i think you know when you see somebody do something really well in a way that you hadn't thought about before, um, where they're they're going left or right of you know, especially if you're starting out and you're trying to kind of understand the rules of, of making things, you know, or the rules. I think of, like, you know, when when people start out making art, they uh, again and and they should. I mean, they they're they're trying to make they're trying to get control. Yeah. They're trying to be. They're trying to be able to replicate something, you right. know, to copy something, be able to understand the rules of you know how perspective works and you know how light affects form, whatever it is. Um, 
right there it's like you can learn all that stuff and you should learn all that stuff but it's all up for grabs <laughs> you, yeah. can, you can choose you know there's there's art that i love primitive painters uh people that you know people did artwork before you know the high renaissance and they had figured perspective out you know and so it's like uh you don't have to have it you know right. you, you know if i can look at naive work look at children's artwork you know it's like they're all you know most children are better artists than i am you know and they just uh it's an there's an emotional content to it something that they do that we lose over time after we uh tell them that no you can't color outside the lines and apples are red and trees are green and all that stuff um so ha not having um you know the the inhibitions that 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 that, that, that they have you know and the, their, their willingness to uh to just put something down there because they see it a certain way um that's really important too. So you know, it's it's just like it's like a juggling act. Uh, you know, my my most of the, you know the, it, it's kind of strange. A lot of my favorite painters don't didn't make any sense to what I do. Um, they do things very differently. Um, their work looks very different. But you know, I love I love you know abstract expressionists are like my favorite group of painters probably and um, doesn't have anything to do with what i do most of the time uh, and probably post impressionists would be my favorite painters yeah okay now i paint a very ugly macaulay Culkin. uh he looks great you've got and total likeness and he's he's laid in there Opening. I should. I'm gonna mute and I'm gonna. I'm gonna pretend I'm Cassandra and use my hairdryer for a minute. <laughs> Hair dryers are the best. Oh, that's looking cool. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I know. I realize I'm. I made one eye lower than the other, which I don't really mind so much. Um, uh, my son has eyes like that. He's, he's one eye's lower than the other. It looks more like my son to me than the color talking. I kind of decided I'm going to do something totally different. Oh, okay. And it's so the last couple of weeks. I started with this one. I didn't get, I didn't finish it, but I started it and did it in here. Just it was really wet into wet and oil painting. Oh, that looks lovely. And and I, I'm I'm okay with it. I mean, it's not. I I needed to go back and clean it up and finish it. And I did the same thing last week with Asner. The Santa Claus. I loved your Azure last week. And then I wanted to see if I can to do what I want to do. I got to make this real dark. So is that oil now or is that still acrylic? This is acrylic. And acrylic is fun because you can you it gets almost dry and then you can move it around enough to smooth it out. Mm -hmm. Not practice, but I I'm kind of maintaining my drawing here, hanging on to it. Take. Mm 
Xander says he would give his brother's left hand to paint as ugly as John just did. He said ugly in quotation marks. Well, careful what you wish for there, neighbor. This, and this, this really doesn't have anything to do. This really doesn't have anything to do with painting, really. I mean, this is more about drawing and mixed media and and using maintaining my drawing that I I I made. But I have to go. I always have because I'm going to work light on top of it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try using some um, crepas on top of it, some oil. Ooh. And but to do that, I don't like going dark with the crepas. I like going light on top of it. So that's why you're darkening it right now. So I'm now. pushing everything darker. I want it, and it, right now, even like with my hand, it's still not, still not very dark. So Cassandra, this is one of the drawings from last week that I did. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought that was really fun. Thank you for oh, pulling that. Yeah, I was trying to remember. It's on the back. <laughs> That's great. Because you know, it's like a good. I really like Ralphie there. <laughs> That's great. Oh. <laughs> you found the perfect photo. I did. I was so happy to find that. I, you know, I saw it in all these different, different forms, and it was, they were all too small and they pixelated real badly when I blew it up in size. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna keep pushing this thing a little, a little darker. I love this hat. How the color? Yeah, are you gonna get the like knit pattern going? Yeah, the color just kind of bounces through it, you know. When I was drawing it, I didn't really. You know, pay attention to the shapes as much as I should. I just figured I would throw paint on there, let it react to the what I put down. So my daughters love the movie Home Alone, and whenever they talk about Kevin, they always have to use his full name, Kevin McAllister. So they're always just like, "Well, Kevin McAllister says." <laughs> so. When I see him, I'm just automatically like, it's not just Kevin, it's Kevin McAllister. That's funny. How old are your daughters, Cassandra? They just turned seven. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Now, I, you know, doing this, I've learned so much about, like, some things that actors have been in that I didn't know. Um, I'm Macaulay Culkin's brother. Was also in Kieran? Home. Yeah, Kieran was also in Home Alone. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was he was Fuller who wet the bed. Yeah. And then um I don't know the name of the actor, but Russ from Vacate from uh, National Lampoon's uh, Christmas Vacation is the guy from the Big Bang. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I something I kind of discovered that I never put to in, you know, so slow I am. Um, give me a second, I'm gonna mute it. Well, that was like um we were re-watching the like original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action movie, you know, was that like from 91 or is it 89? It's on the way around there. Um and it was hilarious to see Sam Rockwell as, as one of the Foot Clan. Oh, that's funny. What did you say about what I caught with Sam Rockwell? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> so um, just reminding me of, um, we recently watched the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, you know, the live action one. Uh -huh. And like Sam Rockwell, who's now more known as 
a dramatic actor, uh, was one of the Foot Clan. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so it's pretty funny. Is incredible. Cassandra, have you ever seen um, his um, portrayal of Chuck Barris? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What's the name of that movie? Um, uh, not, what is it? Uh, it's a great, in, uh, I think George Clooney directed that. Which one? I can't think of the name of it. I'm looking it up. Um, Xander is correcting me. Sam Rockwell was one of the recruits. He wasn't the full foot clan because he didn't get the uniform yet. <laughs> yes, Xander, you are correct on that. <laughs> um, George also, he was saying it's refreshing to hear someone so skilled be dissatisfied with their work as I am with mine. We all fight that battle. We all fight that battle, George. No, my, um, used to drive me nuts when my father would get really depressed, um, go through battles weeks of time where he was just incredibly depressed. And it was all about his artwork. Yeah. And you're just like, are you depressed about that? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could be so depressed. Um, I had one of the cutest things. The very first year I was teaching, uh, I taught at Kansas City Art Institute. And I can't, I can't remember the student's name, but he was a very funny individual. He was, and he was uh, uh, hyperactive, uh, would always say, they had no filter, would always just say what, he, you know, what he was thinking. And my father came in and did a presentation to the school the first year that I was there teaching. And <laughs> this kid, I had come in one morning and I brought like 15 originals and I had them up on the like the the rail the board in the classroom where everybody could see them and I was going to go through and talk about the materials and do all that stuff and they had been asking me to do this and I left the room and I came back in and he has his back to me he can't see that I'm in the room and his comment was oh my god he said, I can't even imagine this being as good as Mark English, but if I could just be as good as John, I would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he turned around and I'm looking right at him. And he, he started to apologize, apologize to me. And I go, no, I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. <laughs> he, said, you're he said, you're describing my life. Uh, but it was such a funny thing. Oh my gosh. I could just be as good as John. I would be happy. The what a moment! Oh, confessions of a dangerous mind was the. There you go. Yeah. Confessions. He was great in that movie. Yeah, that movie's twenty years old. It's twenty-one years old. Surprised it's not older. Oh my god! Um, George Clooney directed it. Yeah. Uh, so funny. Did you know like that in between phase where things look like a zombie? What? First and and I, hope I said I'm in this in between place where my piece looks like a zombie right now. Yeah, good zombie. I just had a thought. You could you were at a point earlier, you could have turned that into Stephen Hawking's very easily. It's the idea of Stephen Hawking's with the bar of soap in his mouth as as well. Wow. It's very funny. Right. I'm done with the crooks. So that's well, as dark as you wanted to get. Uh, I think as dark as I have to get. You know, his, I mean, he's got some, some darks in his face, but I really don't want to go any darker than that. And then again, I can come back in with oil paint and correct it. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to go to work on it with some cray pies and draw back into it and see what happens. Nice.
This is like the Delene hair dryer episode. Sorry, I don't have my hair dryer out. Gosh, Bill, you're missing out today. Yeah, I'm sorry. Dry media day. All right, that's the timer for pose two. Now we're gonna move on to pose three if you're following the time pose. And so you can pick from the last two images or do both, but it's the long pose for 40 minutes. So I'm setting my Timmy timer. I decided to try to draw Macaulay a second time, but it's a different color. And... It's cool, I like your zoomed in. Thanks, I decided to do the different Approach. If I were to do it again, I wouldn't have this line. Let's see if I can get rid of this outside line. I'll explain some material differences real quick. This is a crepa. It's an oil pass. I mean, this is not a crepa. It's an oil pastel, and it's got a lot. Its its base is oil paint. This is a paint stick, and it's just that. It's a stick of oil paint. These are crayons, and there's a big difference. And I'll probably start with them. This this is a cray paw. Let's see if I can get one, which is kind of like an oil crayon. That's what they look like when they how they come. They look like there we go. And it's um, they have a lot of wax in them, and they'll never dry. You have to like paint back into them with oil and stuff. And I, I've used them a lot on paintings. I, I like to use them. Like if I, um, I got to find the, the right one to start with here. But you can draw right back into this like you were drawing with pastel, but it's oil. It's an so oil. that's the cray paw? This is a cray paw, yeah. Okay. So this is so like... Does the oil stick dry? Pardon me? Does the, the oil stick the, dry? The oil stick will dry, but I generally put, like, I paint, when I'm doing this, I, I'll use, like, wax and um, uh, I use, like, a, a Dorland's wax. That's a Dorland's wax and it's like paste and it won't make it dry either. And then I put a little bit of Dalka gel into it and it dries it. So what's fun about that, I'll show you just as this is right now. I got to move some things around. But just as this is right now, just with that cray paw down, I can mm -hmm. come back with a stiff brush and start moving it around. Is there anything on that brush or is it a dry brush? Just totally dry. Yeah, it's cool. And you can you can start you can start, you know, pull, moving your value around, pulling colors together. But eventually I get to where I'm using, you know, dry brush, you know, like kind of dry brush painting back into it. And it's it's extremely contributive. John, have you tried um, Gamblin's cold wax medium? Yeah. Because I think that that one actually dries on its own. It might, I, you know, I think the, I think, I think this will too, but it takes a very, very long time. This is funny. I got a kick out of this. It's like, I'm using this oil crayon and I've, and it looks like lipstick. Yeah. And it goes down like lipstick. <laughs> it's like I'm painting with lipstick here. Well, and Macaulay Culkin has the reddest lips in that image, so that, that uh, is appropriate. Yeah. I actually met an artist who painted with makeup. Um, Interesting. Uses, like, uses makeup brushes. He, he actually used makeup to do uh, sketchbook paintings and things. Really? He was a master of disguise. And um, he, I saw a show of his work back in maybe 96 um, and met him. And, uh, and 
Yeah, the reason he was a master of disguise is because he was um, um, he was a spy. And um, he just came out with a book. Or agent, I guess, is the, the proper term. But, uh, interesting. It was interesting to see like these sketchbook pieces. I love the the textures that this stuff makes, but then that's what that's what. Oops, didn't realize I had pastels on there. That's what my palette looks like. Oh, cool. That's the that's the Galka gel. I'd, I'm out of uh, oh, the wax is right here, right there. Oh, but okay. This so was. So, are you dipping your brush in the Galkid and the wax, and then having it interact with? No, nope, not yet. Pad actively? Okay. Not yet. I'm just putting right now. I'm just drawing with uh, drawing with this red cray pot. It's like it's the right value and color to get what I want out of here. And I love the textures it makes. Mm -hmm. John, is your palette, um, is that some kind of pit wax paper glued down to a board or? Well, I use, I, um, I, I have a big glass palette behind me. Uh -huh. I was using this palette, that landscape that I, that big landscape that I showed. This was the palette from that big landscape. Um, and it's just kind of goofy. I, uh, I, I pulled a bunch of paint, you know, if you don't want to waste it. I pulled, pulled a bunch of paint off my palette, the glass palette and put it on this paper palette last week when I was doing Santa Claus at Asner. Oh, John, I have a question about mixing. When, you, when you're painting something like that, do you do a lot of pre-mixing of your colors? Um, Sometimes, sometimes with the uh, bigger paintings, I'll mix, I'll pre-mix a bunch. Um, generally, I don't. Yeah, neither, neither do I. And um, I know some artists that do and some who don't, but. Um, I have kind of like three different ways of painting that, that I, that I frequently bounce around from. And it's like, wet into wet with an oil paint with I use a lot of palette knives mm -hmm. and done a lot of paintings that way and then kind of like I'm doing now when I want to do something really controlled and hold on to the drawing I do sometimes oh. even do studies this way um studies for bigger paintings because it's fast um So wet into wet. And then, and just kind of like, uh, then this, the kind of a combination of in between where I'll put down, you know, acrylic underpainting, like I kind of did here, and then just transfer totally to oil paint and go wet into wet over the top of it. But this is, to me, you know, I draw in pastel a lot. This is like, this is drawing, you know? Mm -hmm. you know? Pa pa painting That's what I find interesting is how you separate those two. Yeah, and, and painting, painting is great. It really is. Just got, you just got more complicated tools. And you got to yeah. deal with more stuff. But I just love the aggressiveness of this and the immediacy oh. of it. looks like crap now but and it probably will later too but if you work at it you can get there well and i i think too something that should always be talked about is every painting has 
an ugly phase. It's, it could have many ugly phases, but it's a process of getting to the final image. And if you can let yourself get comfortable with the phases of a work, then I think it lets you um, grow stronger that way too, embracing that you have to kind of dwell in it not being perfect and rendered the whole time that you slowly develop the image and let it go through its phases to get to a good finish. Yeah. You know, this may be just too, this is such a delicate little face and I'm not working really big. Usually when I do this, I work larger, but I, I think I can make it work to a certain extent. But I just want to, you know, just like I would be painting here, I would just want to pull in, start pulling my lights, and adjusting my values. It can get, there's a, there's a stage of this that I really like, and I've done some good portraits this way, but I have to remember not to go too far with them because you, you it makes them, you know, I love the texture and the granular feel to it and stuff, but there's a, a point of no return where they get too finished and they kind of lose some of the appeal they had to me at the beginning. And is the texture the appeal for you? Uh, well, it's, you know, it's putting something down that you got to deal with. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a kind of a big thing. I love the coat. I wish I didn't do the, do the whole, you know, painting like that, but I won't be able to. But I, I it's very, wait a second, I got to get these, uh, got some wet acrylic brushes here. I'm kind of switching palette. And I do remember a little pastel. That's the bad part, is they hit the ground. <laughs> and then I step on them or roll over them with my chair and then walk upstairs <laughs> and walk out of my studio with an oil pastel stuck to my foot. At least you're not three dogs with Prussian blue. That's right. Not tonight. <laughs> I'm All never right. going to forget this story. All right. I'm going to just, I, I do this a lot just to kind of control my color too. You know, I think like a great flesh tone is just like burnt sienna and white. You can get really, yeah. really nice, flat, get really nice flesh tone and then you can push, push it around a little bit. Bill, you got his lips right. Uh, not yet. Now, I don't tend to stop when it's in an ugly phase. If it's in an ugly phase, I keep going. And then it has to be at some kind of there has to be some kind of brightness to the picture, and then I can stop. It can be unfinished. It can be things that I'm thinking about doing to it, but have not um, yet done. This is really when it comes to painting, not drawing. Uh, drawings have ugly phases all the time, but um, but I'll. But then I can leave it. Then I can sit and decide if I want to go further or if I want to leave it. Um, but I can't, I don't really like to leave things if they're at that. Phase. Oh, I totally agree. And yeah. I've had some pieces be at an utter ugly phase and I got to go get my kids from the bus stop. And then right. I have to like march past my piece for the rest of the day, just, you know, doing stuff with my kids. And it's, it's so hard to just be like, I just, 
I need an hour to get it past this point, but I don't, I don't get to do that. So then I look forward to the next day when I can go work on it for sure. Yeah. I mean, do you find that sometimes those are the pieces that don't survive? Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's just, I just need to sit down and get it to the next phase. Cause sometimes I don't know about you all, but I will get stuck in a loop, like almost afraid to push it where it needs to go. And so but once I finally let go and accept, all right, this, I may ruin this piece moving forward, but often that's when it gets good is when I accept I'm going to potentially ruin it and then it becomes good. Sometimes it doesn't. It makes sense. Now, as you, like any painting you're doing, it's just like, you're kind of, I don't know what my darkest dark is going to be, but I'm going to have to find some darks in a few places. You have a good dark there with the between the collar. Yeah. And the scar. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's a, it's a big stretch right now, but I think I can pull it together pretty quick. I think so too. This has got, I got the a value set up there. It's like, man, I didn't even didn't think I even needed the great A little bit of dry brush paint to go back into it. So is there a difference between, because I'm, I'm listening to the three, I didn't really use cray paws or um paint sticks and all of those so you also said oil oil stick oil pastel and crepe pot so what's the difference between an oil uh oil it's stick just, versus it's a crepe just, pot? it's just oil paint it's got a little bit more binder into it it's real stiff and um it's like a big giant oil crayon then what's the oil pastel well, the oil, the oil, well, big giant oil pastel. I'm, I keep, I call them. They're the same thing. I call them different names all the time. Um, my, my mistake. Um, okay. But a, um, the the big difference is the crepas with the all with the wax, and the oil. I mean, the oil pastels. I mean, they're, they're archival. They'll dry eventually mm -hmm. and it and they're literally like using pain with lipstick they're very okay. like i always hear them talked about but i never was sure of the the nuances of the differences Yeah, it's starting to come together. Definitely. This will be another painting I'll get like, you know, two thirds of the way done and just it will go up against the wall and just like, I'm not sure I even want to finish that. <laughs> Why do I want a painting of Macaulay Culkin? It's Macaulay Culkin. I guess. Oh, it's looking really good, Cassandra. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Now, are you painting... Um, are those, those are acrylics, right? Mm -hmm. Are you using any matte medium or anything to thin out your paint or to make it more fluid or... Just water. I mean, I treated the cardboard with GAC 100, um, and then I just watered the acrylics down to 
to be lighter if I want it to, or to like thinner if I need to just more glaze it. Right. Do you ever use matte medium with them? I do. Um, sometimes if I want like a background to be um, a little more smoothly blurry, I will add matte medium to kind of let me to do that. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't use it terribly much. But I like it for almost like the visual effects it lets yeah. me do. Well, the reason I ask is because when I when I thin out paint, I I don't really like thinning out acrylic with just water because it's too uh, it's too like it moves too much, and the uh, uh, I like using matte medium because it keeps it sort of viscous and mm. it keeps the body. Uh, and uh, I I sort of like that quality. Yeah, I like the thin layers. I don't know. It lets me um make small adjustments. I think. Yeah. I also find more and more, I'm not, I don't know about you, but I, I really, and this is a contradiction, I, I tend to like the, um, the, I used to use just the heavy bodied acrylics, um, but I like the consistency of some of, um, you know, like Badger airbrush paints or uh, the Craft Smart cheap. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Things. Um, and then um, some of the golden colors as well. I still really like heavy body because um, it lets me pick what I want it to be. But yeah. I, I know what you mean. Like I've used it that way and it's cool. But I think when I paint, I just, I like what's comfortable. And this is definitely more comfortable for me. Yeah. But I can totally get why you're saying that. Yeah, it's funny how it's funny how it changes, you know, it changes, you know. Um, but I, even with oil paints, I mean, there's certain paints that I really love the consistency of and others that I don't. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like uh, Williamsburg paints, I just love their paints. I've heard good things. I've actually never used Williamsburg. Yeah, they're, they're probably my favorite paints, and their color range is really good. Versus like Charvin, which to me is still a little too buttery. Um, and I don't know if like there's not enough resistance to it, you know, and. Um, But I also like paint sticks too, you know. Like the R and F paint sticks are really fun to just, you know, kind of jam into a canvas and draw with. Hmm. I need to toy with it. it. You know, you guys always make it look cool. Some point, I want to try encaustics. Yeah. <laughs> What's that laugh about, John? I'm I'm laughing at my <laughs> Sandra's making a merch suggestion. <laughs> what? Uh Xander's making a t shirt uh Suggestion and it's a black shirt that says, "If I could draw as good as John English, I'd be happy." <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That needs to happen. Yeah. I'd wear that shirt. Well, you know, I'd be happy you if I could paint as good as John English. Uh, Sandra, you paint better than I do.
if I had a paint panda bear or have a panda bear painted, I would come straight to you. Because you know, I, he's in a fun. Macaulay's in an interesting stage in his life. There, he still has those the lips, and you know, children have different shapes going on in that that the scale of his lips for one, but the jowls that are like on the outside of his, you know, coming around the corners of the mouth and, and stuff. I mean, that's very indicative of a child, a young child. Describing him as a cherub is perfect description. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like you think, like when you're doing this, and I'm putting some color underneath it and, you know, kind of pushing things around here a little bit with, with maybe too much color in places, that type of thing. But you think you've built up the value to where you're bright enough. And I really haven't yet. It seems very ghosty uh still but mm -hmm. good things are starting to happen with it and oh yeah but so much of it was getting that acrylic underneath to the right value if i didn't do that i would be in a lot of trouble right now well it wouldn't it wouldn't be as dynamic right well it would just take me a lot longer to do it for one I'd probably have to get very opaque with paint. And I mean, I mean being really subtle with this stuff. Too much texture on this side. You can just rub it out with your finger. So, I, you know, that's what I love about oil paint. I mean, sometimes I use it really thick and you know, cake it on with a palette knife. And sometimes I'm just like scrubbing it in. Right. And you can also, you, you know, when you, you can put it on and then you can pick it out and play with what's underneath that way. Like there's so many cool things that can happen. Yeah. I was really excited today. I got a nice message. I'm not going to say who it's from because I don't want to embarrass either party that I'm going to talk about. Um, one of them I don't even know. Um, but the a very, very good professional illustrator, working artist sent me a message today and said, my daughter just signed up for your program. Oh. And I, uh, that's somebody that knows what, you know, they know they know what they're doing, you know, and and then you know, to to verify what we're doing is just a real compliment. It was nice. Wow, that's amazing and wonderful, and yeah, that's a real compliment that he entrusts his daughter with this program. Yeah, well, I'm not going to give it away, but it's actually a she that entrusts the daughter. Daughter, I shouldn't have said awesome. that. You're, both female, put it that way. <laughs> well, I mean, we got a lot of great guest speakers lined up for next semester, right? Very oh, yeah. Exciting. If you consider uh, Bill Sienkiewicz a good speaker, yeah. Or yeah, anything is stuff. Uh, Andy Park, uh, head of visual development from Marvel. Okay, Thank you, thanks. Yes. yes, they're okay. Isn't one of the uh editors of Juxtapose magazine going to be in there too? I think so. And I, I Cassandra, I don't want to like go and look on the website right now. <laughs> I, I should know that off the top of my head, but I'm I'm terrible. But they, you know, I just finished this semester yesterday. 
um, yep. or the day before. Oh yeah, 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 the day before. Yeah, yeah, that was great. You came in and joined us at study hall. Yeah, I like and to it, keep you guessing. It, well, it's the it's the it's the easiest oh, study hall to come to. The last one of the semester is always on the <laughs> You got it was that. on a, it was on a Tuesday. Tuesdays are easier for me to show up. You got that figured out, right? But it was cool seeing that like to the end, students are showing up with work and they're still hard at work as the semester comes to an end. And I think that's that's exciting. Yeah. Got some good students. Mm -hmm. doing big things our, uh, we just had another ex-student out of the program for a year and a half now won their third gold medal at the Society of Illustrators this year that ain't bad uh, yeah that's impressive uh, granted they were very good when they came into the program but learn to put it together in the program i should say Just as an FYI, there's about uh, nine minutes until the end of this pose. So just giving you an update on the time. I'm in trouble. I always lose track of that. And I always want to know. And Timmy never tells me. Well, at least somebody can, you know, and even if I don't get very far, they can kind of see what it does. See another way to approach. Ooh, lovely. We'll just keep bringing value up. I mean, there's things you can, oh man. Uh, things you can do. A lot that I mean, this is even getting really detailed when I don't really want to, but just to show that as a possibility, you can pick out like even a colored pencil, which is oil and wax, by the way, totally melts with oil paint and anything that I've been using. And if you wanted to throw, this is a cheap way of doing it, tricky, right? You wanted to throw a little detail and then you can go dry brush paint back into that. You can really, you know, really push the finish that way. Oh, that's cool. Is that a Prismacolor color pencil? Yep. Again, I'm, I'm using my original drawing, kind of holding on to it. And uh, learned how to do this when I was doing like editorial work, especially cover editorial work, and you had very little time. Uh -huh. And I had to ship things that were, you know, needed to be dry very quickly. And so I would, you know, kind of give them a mock fake oil painting <laughs> but it's you know that's a fun way to do it i love it there's there's uh there's no cheating in art you know? <laughs> technique uh, quick techniques are very helpful at times yeah yeah 
wow, this is taking this uh, color pencil really well. Oh, wow, that's impressive. Yeah, like knowing, I, you know, I always like to finish in oil. I had a, a painting that I was just on a super ted, uh, tight deadline to get it out the door for a show. And just knowing what medium you can use in which it'll dry faster, which, you know, liquid does it for me. So I don't always use liquid, but if I have a piece that needs to finish fast, I use liquid on that so that I can get a quick dry. Yeah, he has, he has kind of gray eyes, doesn't he? Getting gray where? His eyes are kind of gray, bluish gray. Mm. Ooh, Bill, that's looking cool. Good profiles. Oh, nice one. Has any of you ever used a Japan dryer? Have you used what? Japan dryer. I haven't. It's, um, a little bit goes a long way, but if you need something to dry for, you know, use sparingly, it can definitely help. Thing dry. Um, so is that your medium? Like, do you use that in place of a medium or alongside it? You use a few drops of it mixed in with your paint. Maybe that's how I use it. Just a few drops of it mixed in with the paint. And it mm -hmm. uh, speeds up the drying time. It so does. Um, uh, the the ga Galka gel yeah. is the same, not quite as extreme. Yeah. Without some of the other problems that, that, that the Japan dryers have. Um, yeah, if you use too much, it can crack your cracks and yellow. Oh, does it? Yeah. Um, the one I stay away from is cobalt dryer because you know, it's toxic. Um, Nothing wrong with a little cobalt in your blood. Very toxic. Yeah. You don't want to go there. No. Um, but yeah, it um, it's for illustration jobs. If you're painting in oils, it it will work in kind of a pinch. Um, yeah, the I I always thought that the yeah, um, um, they used they used to make a product which I swear is the same product called Wind Gel. Have you ever used that, Bill? Yeah. Yeah. Wind gel? Wind I gel. It, I think it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing as like Galka gel. Yeah, the resin gel, yeah. 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 Um, but I haven't tried just using the gel with without the cold wax medium. I, I usually I'm using I'm I use it as my medium all the time. Oh, okay. Instead instead of using a Galkid like liquid, you yeah. know, like on the side, I you know I just and uh, I just use the uh, the gel. Well, I'll try that because I I use Galkid and uh, I like Galkid, but I don't like how it dries in the bottle when there's very little of it left. Oh, oh yeah. um, or, turn the bottle upside down. Okay. I I used to like the glass bottles too. Um, now they put it in a plastic bottle. I have so many, I, I bet if I go through my studio and went through my drawer, or went through my cabinets, I could pull out probably three or four bottles of Galkid that's like solid. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I, I, uh, there was like a forum that Gamblin had where you could like have a QA. Um, thing going and so I asked them about it and they said turn the bottle upside down you mean when it's and like have it have it be in your like where we store it always store it upside down and that keeps oxygen out and so that slows that from happening that's oh. nice of them. it's nice of them to tell you not on you know, like as instructions <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, that would have been really <laughs> helpful <laughs> yeah Turn the bottle upside down, you know. Um, I didn't like the plastic bottles for a couple of different reasons. One, the leaching into the 
media, but also with the glass bottles, you know exactly how much you're going to get. The the plastic bottles because of the vacuum sealing, the the amount varies a little bit from bottle to bottle. Not a lot, but just enough to, you know, close me. And I've tried liquid, but I didn't like the way liquid smells as much as the Galka. I don't like the, I don't like, uh, it's, it's, it's the cleanest. I mean, it's really clean and pure and all that stuff, but man, I, it's shiny. Yeah. I know Cassandra likes the shiny part, but. Like the shininess of it. Yeah, I love shiny. I love a good glass, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> As I'm adding highlights to everything. Makes a good skincare product, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I could okay. just do a little area rub my value up so I know. Put a bunch more color in this bag. That's the, you know, that's the trick of doing something like this, where it's, you're just trying to bring the value up, but you don't want it to like gray out. You got to keep adding color to it. Mm -hmm. So can you explain that a little uh, bit more? Pardon me? Like yours, can you explain the graying out? Well, I, I'm doing? adding a light on top of, you know, anytime you're adding, you know, a light color, you just keep adding, you just keep kind of taking the color away if, as you're scrubbing on top of back into this stuff. And it, it just, you know, it's like putting like a white, a white glaze over, a light glaze over something and it just keeps cooling it off. And this is a very warm little face here. Mm -hmm. God, I haven't done this in a long time. All the things we used to do, Bill. The techniques. Did I lose Bill? Can you hear me, Cassandra? Oh, yeah. Sorry, what'd you say? Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. Yeah. Can you show me that again, Bill? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. This, this whole thing, you know, this is. Uh, oh, that looks lovely. Thanks. This is late. This is uh, 1987. This is layers and layers of of acrylic and crystal clear and matte medium and um and you're still alive man i know <laughs> i know <It's, laughs> I, yeah so um but it was a and tinting the color and then going in with lights and then tinting again a very long process uh to paint, you know, it's very, it was a very labor intensive process, which I'm actually kind of thinking of revisiting. But that was before I ever used oil paints. Um, and, you know, watercolors and dyes and acrylics and yeah, and all, but I'll probably do a similar thing, but without the spray fixatives. That's funny. Um, one year at the Illustration Academy, uh, it was the first year Greg Florica came as a speaker, 
Yeah. And Fred Otnis was there. And Fred Otnis was doing a demo in front for the classroom. And <laughs> we were in like, you know, we were inside in a studio and he didn't even wow. think twice about it. He just started spraying spray fix. Oh my gosh. And it's like <laughs> Craig's like just like completely lost it. He's like, what are you doing? And and then he's then, you know, after you know, Fred realized what he's doing, he's like, Oh man, I'm so sorry. I'm just so used to being in my studio by myself. I didn't even consider it. And uh Greg's asking him, it's like, so you do like you just spray that inside in your studio? And he said, Yeah, I've been doing it for years. Oh and my gosh. He was telling him how oh bad God. how bad it was for him. And he <laughs> Fred Hopkins looks at him, he goes, I'm 80. <laughs> he said, you'll be lucky to live as long as me. <laughs> well, that I remember that's when Greg kind of, Greg had stopped using fixatives and was using packaging tape. Yeah, that was a good answer. Yeah. It was a, it was a really good look. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a, cool. I got to see him do a demo with that. I loved it. Oh, it became, it became a thing. Hang on, I'll be right back. I'll show you. I think we're going to see a Spelanka. Wait. Hey, everybody, start posting your work on hashtag MaryHive. I'm going to try to sign in on my phone. It looks like Timmy's sitting on a runway. So, sorry. I want to see if I can do it properly. So, I just have to stop him, Ralphie. That's my problem. I know. It's hard, isn't it? Oh, it's so fun. And you get into the detail of the stuff and you realize how far away your values are. And you yeah, and I really want to paint the flag. You got to keep making them lighter. So you kind of you kind of pull the whole thing up in value, then you go back in and hit your lights again. All right, I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to try to sign into Instagram while getting this sorted out. But everybody take your time. Oh, my gosh, that's amazing. So this is a piece um, I, I bought from Greg, got Greg back in, I don't know, late 90s. But this is, um, these are all different collage things in here. Um, this is on a piece of illustration board, glued, this, glued to a piece of illustration board. But wow. this, these strips, you can see like the, the he sealed it. I mean, there's oil paint under here, there's acrylic under here. And then he sealed the whole thing with, um, if you can see the kind of the strips, that's packaging tape on the surface. And, um, you know, the like the lines and stuff. I don't know if you can. That's an amazing piece. See that? Yeah, that was, uh, I think that was for San Francisco Focus Magazine. Somewhere I've got the oh, third piece. Yeah. Uh, yeah, isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, and the cool thing is, you know, so he could lay down collage and different things and children's draw, kind of children's drawings um, and, and mix media really quickly um, and then seal the whole thing in, you know, and... Um, yeah, so, and then I've got another one of his, I, I think I've shown this one before, but um, this one, which is, might be harder to see, um, you can see like, I don't know if you can see the striations across there, that's all packaging tape um, on there. And I think this one is um, acrylic with oils on top some of the light areas that shows it's it's very shiny it's amazing how he took took that problem of using spray fixative or um things that were really harmful to you and made it functionally work but made it a great image and it, it was it had a really interesting look to the technique yeah, no, absolutely, and it was unique. And these are, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these are pieces of photographs that he stuck down, and then he then he painted on top of under on the. It doesn't show up because it's you know. It's I, I, I um 
he doesn't know it, but I have some life drawings of his. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Uh, no, he knows it. Uh, but I, he, he's really, he was really, he was really impressive in figure class. His figure drawings are gorgeous. Yeah. Um, Lights out. I mean, just really good. Uh, really expressive. Yeah. Have you he's seen very, he, he, Greg's a really spiritual guy. Uh, in fact, that's we ended up giving them the nickname "the spirit," and <laughs> he would bring. He would ask one of our other artists to bring a drum, and he would do a, a like a a drum circle before he would start doing his demo. <laughs> it cracked me up. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. I mean, when you, I was you remember that, Cassandra? Did he do that for you? Oh, she yeah. Came. Sorry, I'm still trying to share it. When I was um when I was staying at his house, uh when I came down to visit him, he was uh he would meditate every morning, you know, and just go off and do his things. He had he grew fresh tomatoes. Um now he mm -hmm. lives in um in Roxana, we live in New Mexico. Um I I shamelessly, and I'm embarrassed about this, but we were out a bunch of the a bunch of the students were throwing a football around yeah and um i spent the earlier part of my child well all through my teen child i i loved i mean i loved playing football it was a big part of my life and uh he's like okay john i'm gonna cover you <laughs> we both go up for he dislocated his knee and it, oh. i felt so bad and um, you're about five four you know? uh, he, he weighs maybe uh, maybe maybe 110 pounds yeah he's a small i mean you know, and i was like greg you know careful man because <laughs> you're like six one john and no i'm not uh, you're like I'm six not. One? what are you like i'm like five ten uh i'm not very tall but you're an athletic human being yeah but it, greg, we, we, we had this collision in midair okay and I, are we ready to are we ready to talk about um, what everyone posted? Yeah, uh, can we? Yeah. Uh, Cassandra, Cassandra, Bill and I were having a conversation. Seriously. Sorry, yeah. I can't awkwardly make my face go away on this. Can and you so make I'm that, having can, to hold my phone up. Can you mm -hmm. right, zoom in on the first one there on the left? That's a beautiful drawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just waiting for you guys to be ready. No, we're ready. Go ahead. Fire, fire away. We're done with our ridiculous right. conversation. Sorry, there's like three other images here of this lady's outfit, but besides that, we're good. Okay. Um, that all right. Oh, that's beautiful. That looks awesome. I don't know how to make this top image go away. Oh, sorry. I'm. Well, you did. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's okay. I should not be in charge of this. Sorry, Timmy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like I don't know why it's showing this in the corner. Oh, well, don't worry about it. Just go, just go through. Okay. Sorry, uh, everybody. This is what happens when I'm put in charge. You can either choose oh. that or not do it. One of the two. But let's let's go ahead and do yeah. it. I'd rather see everybody. Doing. All right. Sorry. Really good job. <laughs> let's get past these. Stresses. Oh. Look at that. I love that. Are you watching Home Alone while doing that? <laughs> nice. I love it. Okay. Oh, oh Chuck. Oh, Chuck, that's <laughs> killer. That's got so much attitude to it. Oh, it's so nice. So good. So good. Oh, nice drawing. Wow, Pete, that looks fantastic. I I know who it is. I don't even see the name, but I can tell. Who oh, I know, right? Right. I know. Very nice, Julian. Julian. That's amazing. Beautiful. Ooh, that's oh, I love that, Xander. That is just lovely. Wow. Gosh, these are good. Oh, oh man, it's beautiful. That's nice. Is that Gary? Yeah, that's Gary. Yeah. Ooh, that's sorry, every time I talk to you, you see Ralphie up. I'm sorry, guys. It doesn't matter whoever talks their their image. Oh, there you go. Timmy would always correct me for saying. Oh, there we go. Look. Hey, look at you. Yay! Yeah. All right. Sorry, everybody. Paul, that looks fantastic. 
Wow, Randy. Cassandra, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can you not hear me? Yeah. I was just going to say that uh, Timmy used to always, he gets worried when I say this, but he's not here, so I'm going to say it. Um, we have a li we had a list going at the academy, and it's like students we need to extinguish. <laughs> 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 we can't let these people get into the industry. They're going to take our livelihoods away. Uh, so good. I love this. There's a bunch Great of them. I think it's so cool how good everybody is. Oh, that's cool. Fantastic. Great job. I love your colors. Can you hear me okay if I put this away? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Ooh, that's cool. Oh, that's lovely. Can you see when I have control? I do a slow scroll because I want to see what everybody does. Mm -hmm. Really good job. We need five ahead easily. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I love this. This is so it's delicately done. Oh, so beautiful. This eye. Great job, Joanna. Wow. I love that. Wonderful line work. Just wonderful line work. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh my that gosh, AJ. AJ. Yeah. Very obviously AJ's work. That's just fantastic. Oh, so good. With a touch of Ralph Stevenson with that one. I, I just love that. And I love how he handled the sweater. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice, too. Really nice, Devin. Good drawing. Mm -hmm. Very fun. Great job. Great painting. Really hey, nice. Cassandra, you're going to have to yeah, do Cassandra, you're going to have huh? to check in here because Timmy had messaged me and told me, don't forget to tell everybody we have just a couple more days for our early enrollment where you can save $200 on the price of the classes. And then you also, if you're taking your very first class, one of the uh, the one of the 10 classes, the um, fundamentals of character design or process skill and craft on the illustration side, or the uh, uh, skill and style for gallery arts, those three classes we're offering them for seven ninety nine next semester. That's amazing. Yep. Take advantage of it, everybody. Because then it also means potentially you could be in my class with John and I, and we have so much fun. Oh yeah, and so it's a that's a four hundred dollar discount off the classes. Yeah, don't miss out, guys. That's the big deal. And Timmy keeps reminding us that he doesn't know if they're going to do it again because he thinks it's too big of a discount. <laughs> too much fun. Go, Marcy. <laughs> Love it, Marcy. I love it. Marcy. I love it. Marcy gets right to the point. Awesome. Oh, that's fun. Nicole? Yeah, very nice. Yeah, that's Nicole. That's cool. I love how you simplified it, but you still have the three. That's really fun. Oh, that's wild. That's a cool one. Oh, that is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. You got you oh, nailed oh. that eye, that left his right eye, the left eye in the picture is just awesome. Yes. Wow. Nice, Jeff. And happy early birthday. Jeff said he turns 70 tomorrow. Wow. Congrats. Happy birthday. I hope you have a fantastic birthday. You're one of the oh, really nice. You're almost really as nice. close to Christmas as me. Oh, look at that, Peter. Oh, really nice. Really nice. <laughs> That's so fun. Peter really sent me, uh, Peter was in our portfolio class this semester and sent Dale and I a message for a piece he would just kind of finished up. He'd started in class and it was killer. Elon Musk piece. Oh, wow. That's great. Good yeah. job, Karen. Wow. Love it. 
So fun. And you got the plaid. Great job. Really nice. I like how you did the zipper. That's fun. Ooh. Yeah. And nice. I left the lights behind. Really great, nice. Great attitude to it. Mm-hmm. Great job. Good for a short name with the hands on that. Now, let's see what AJ's got going on here. Wow. Oh, that's nice. Really nice. You work so fast. How do you get these all done at this level? Oh, that's great. Beautiful line work. Wow, Felicity. Very, what? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Oh, really so sick. good. Great job. Was she like 20 now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love this, Jeff. I love yeah. it when you do it like this way. I know how oh, close it is. The hand clutching the pants, like <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the narrative. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, so good. Great job. Wow, everyone's doing every their piece is fantastic tonight. Nice. So good. <laughs> I like these two together because it feels like he's turning the lights on for them. Really nice. <laughs> so fun. No, that's great. Good job. Right. Really nice. Really nice. Great likeness. Fun, fun uh, variation. Really nice, Leslie. Wow. Nice. That's cool. Really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perfect. Perfect to put old fudge in there. Good job. Good value on that. Really nice. Yeah, there's some good stuff. I can tell everyone they had fun. That's great together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look like they're looking at the same thing, like their eyes are going in the same direction. Great job. I'm proud of everybody that got like the clothing details in stripes and plaids, and wow, really nice. Great job. Good line work. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's good. It's That's very good. good. Love that hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so cool. Job. And the three. Yeah. Yes. Just love, beautiful. Love how important you made, you know, the emphasis on it. It's really nice. And a really great texture. <laughs> I love that. And I also love that you're the stressed out sketcher. Oh man, I wish I had that name. <laughs> like that your name speaks to me. Yeah, that's really good. Great piece. Good job. You could sell that name to so many different artists. Totally. Oh, that's a good one. Really fun. Great job. Oh, nice background you put in there. Fun. That's fantastic. Love, love, love. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> really good job. Very nice love this so much. 
Yeah. yeah. Perfect name. Look at the three with the lines of the stripes, just to hint at that pattern. Yeah. Fantastic. Great job. Really nice. <laughs> yep, got him great. <laughs> I love that. Really love that drawing a lot. Yeah. Nice. Oh, oh wow, that's, that's lovely. lovely. That kind of that that's like a Bart Forbes. That's beautiful. Yeah, totally. And if you don't know who that is, yeah. look him up because he's an amazing artist. <laughs> Nicole, that's awesome. I love that you zoomed in on his face. <laughs> <laughs> That's great piece. Uh, this may be my favorite piece you've ever done, Nicole. Thank you for this one. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, nice. Wow. Really, really well done. Really well done. Nice little drawing. Should say Very nice drawing. drawing. Like the two color. Yeah. That too. Well handled. Nice job. Also, good job. And you managed to write bears on his hat. All those little details that impresses me. Cool. Good job. Really nice. Ooh. That's lovely. Oh, oh wow. Jeez. That's fantastic. Oh, that's, that's just stunning. Gosh, look at the nose, that 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 pink undertone of just lovely. Great job, Karen. Really great job. Back to the list. Very nice job. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. That looks like that that feels like a Robert Weaver drawing. Yeah, yeah. totally. That not quite, but the attitude of the the color, the pencil, all of it mixed together is is really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! That's I love that you kept the red wow. mostly just with the soap. So well done. So well done. Oh wow, that's fantastic too. Ooh, nice. Just love. Oh, this is the perfect one to end it on. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, everyone, you did so good tonight. And thank you for putting up for, with me handling tech. I'm sorry, Timmy does it 10 times better. Oh, you did a great job, Cassandra. Thank you so much. I would be totally lost without you here. <laughs> in, many, in many ways. Um, Bill, I wouldn't be totally lost without you here, but I really like having you here. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here, both of you, and happy holidays, everybody. Happy, um, holidays. happy holidays. And I'm so thankful for all of y'all. This is yep. wonderful. Oh, wait. Me too. We'll be back after the first of the year. Um, and uh, hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful break. Well, we'll meet up soon, but have a nice week off, but keep on drawing anyways. All right. See you, everybody. Okay. Night. Night.